Okay, that has started, so we are being recorded. All right, everyone. Welcome to our first meeting for the Districting Advisory Board. Um, I'm Sue Audet, I'm the town clerk. Thank you, Amber. sorry, they're closing my office door, I'm making too much noise. And um, I thought we could start with just introductions, we'll go around and that'll also be our attendance. Okay, so um, as, as stated, I'm Sue Audet, I'm the town clerk. So I'll be a, a non-voting, like an ex-official kind of member advisory. And Mike Warner, you want to go next? Hi, I'm Mike Warner. I'm from the IT department um, for the town of Amherst. Um, I'm also a non-voting member. Um, I'm the mapping guy in town. I've worked with data. I've done re-precincting um, before for other cities and towns. So I'm kind of the, the liaison between you folks and the state, and I'll be drawing lines, running stats, and bringing them back and forth with each meeting so that we can make sure that we meet the state's criteria. Okay. And Dee, you want to go next? Yeah, I'm Demetria Shabazz, uh, and I'm the Board of Registrar's representative. Okay. All right, uh, Tammy? Hi, I'm Tammy Parks, and I'm in uh, Precinct 6. Irene? Um, hi, I'm Irene Duchovny. I'm in uh, Precinct 3, District 1. Okay. Peggy? Hi, I'm Peggy Shannon. I'm in um, Precinct 7, and I live on Mill Lane. That's it. Okay. Tracy? I'm Tracy Zafian. I live, uh, I'm in District 3. I live in Precinct 4. And I've I've volunteered and worked on a lot of elections. She sure has. All right, and Joseph. Hello, uh, my name is Joseph. Uh, I am in District 2, and I am a bus driver for UMass Transit. All right. All right, so we have an attendance. Um, I think if we follow the order of our posted meeting now that we've done the introductions we can um get the public comment section taken care of and then and then go right into election of officers so i'm going to look at the attendees and we have one person attending adrian terizzi so adrian if you have anything to to say please raise your hand we'll give her a second Yep, there it is. So Mike, do I just click allow to talk? Okay, Adrian, I think um, you can talk. You'll need to unmute yourself. We don't hear you yet, Adrian, you're still muted. Maybe you have to unmute her. I just asked her to unmute. But she may not be allowed to. Do you have the ability to unmute her, Sue? I, I don't have the ability to. I just clicked ask to unmute. So let me see if I can. That's how you do it when you're a host or a co-host. Yeah, I did that. I clicked on it, but nothing's happening. There's a remove permission to talk. That's not what we want. So do I need to promote her? I mean, you could promote her temporarily. And I then, think yeah. she's I logging think in. Promote her, but I think yeah. she's logging in with another. She is. Computer. So maybe you need to allow the other. No, she's in there twice. All right, I'm going to hold on. Hello, um, thank you for bearing with me. There we hello, go. Every, hello, everyone. I'm attending this meeting as a past uh, participant in the district advisory uh, board back in 2011. I, it's a, a vital interest of mine and I'm joining just to wish you well and to say, go for it. A lot of work ahead. I'm going to try to lower my hand because I do not really have 
a public comment. As I said, otherwise, other than to wish you all well. Thanks so much. Thank you, Adrian. All right, I'm going to try to get you out of here. Let's see. Thank you. Okay. Sue, work your magic because I can't, uh, I can't seem to do it at my end. Okay, I'm working on it. Thank you. Okay, all right, thank you. There we go. All right. So with the public comment out of the way, thank you, Adrian, for that comment. Um, we'll move to the election of officers. Uh, hey. We should elect a chair. We should also elect someone who um, can take the minutes and any other positions that we think we need. So normally what we would do is, um, do we have any nominations for a chair from the voting members? Don't all speak at once. Does anyone want to self-nominate? I don't. <laughs> I know, we're just, we're quiet over here. Nobody wants to uh, nominate a chair or self or nominate themselves as chair? Gotta have a chair. <laughs> Peggy, Can we have a, a chair and a co-chair? If you want to. And to share the load? That might be more amiable to. Yeah. I'm willing if I have a co-chair, but not. Okay. Anybody care to be a co-chair? Again, don't all speak at once. We do have to have a chair for the meeting. <laughs> Unfortunately, Mike and I and Demetri can't help you with that because we're non-voting members, so we can't take part in that. Tracy! I, I can be a co-chair, but I'm also a chair of another committee and we're getting busy. And so I would that's like what, to not have to do very much <laughs> as but a I want, to, I want to share, that's why I said to share it. I can do it. Please. Yes. Um, if we can be, yeah, I can, we can do that then, I guess. Awesome. So Irene has nominated herself as chair. Tracy has nominated herself as a co-chair. Um, do we have any other nominations? No. Oh, and, do we have any? Well, can Sue, can you just speak briefly to what the chair, yeah. co-chair responsibilities are? And also, I mean, just in terms of what the updated time frame is for this committee. Okay. So chair and coach well you know the chair responsibility normally is to just keep the order of the meeting keep things flowing you know follow the agenda make sure there's a second to every motion um start the meeting end the meeting that sort of thing it's kind of administrative and just managing okay. how much um like on the on the rank choice um commission Tanya was also doing things like keeping, get, receiving all the email from people and sending out agendas and stuff. Is that also part of the chair responsibility or will, is that something that you will be doing? Yeah, that's what I'll be doing because I'm the staff liaison pretty much. Um, I post the meetings, I will be putting the agenda packets online. Um, and I, you know, I, I'm willing to be like, a, um, just like, you know, starting off communication center for everybody, not a deliberation center, but a communication center. Um, so, you know, I can, I'm happy to do that part of it. This would mostly be for um, the, running the meetings themselves. Okay. okay. And so Mike, I'm also, I'm also willing to be a co-chair if um, oh, okay. Tracy feels uh, like it's too much. Okay. I mean, well, what Sue said is not that involved because right. my other chair position is more involved <laughs> in terms of us. And I guess like when we have to, you know, write up our findings and our recommendations and so on, like we would find somebody at that time to do that, those tasks, right? So I just know yeah. for my other committee, I'm the one writing those things. <laughs> so, um, I'm, I mean, I'm happy to do that. I, I would prefer that to be in the minute taker. I fear minutes. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> um, the, uh, yeah, just a related question is, Sue, did you send those a, like a, a, I didn't see the agenda in the packet, right? Is it just on the posting only? It's actually, it's on the, um, the website. There's a section on the DAB website. 
uh, for okay, I got agendas, it. Agendas, okay. minutes, right. and packets. And actually, I was late in putting the agenda. I'm still getting my act together. I'm putting everything together for this. Right. So it. I put the agenda. The agenda was on, of course, in the me official meeting posting on the town calendar. Right. No, I saw that. Okay. Yep. yep. And but you, I'm also because putting there, it. there were also the GAB agendas from the last time this was done. That's yeah, what I, cleaned, I saw. Okay. I cleaned that out right. this morning. Right. Yeah. Right. I says, what's that got doing it. there from 2011? Yes. Yes. That's gone now. Um, so then, okay. so the other question though, part of this was the timeline and Mike, did you want to talk about that? Or do we need to know that for the uh, people that are nominating themselves? Do you, do you still want to hear that? I think it's helpful just for people yeah. to have the context of like how long this will be and how many meetings we might anticipate and so on. But yeah, so I'm going to start and work from the deadline back. Um, we have a deadline from the Secretary of State's office to provide our finished product or what we believe to be our finished product which is a is a map to um the secretary of state's office and i believe it's one of it's one of the last days in october it's the last week of october our goal in my opinion should be to finish it before that i <laughs> procrastination really stresses me out so um like a week or two before that should be our ideal goal but we will not be getting a copy of the official census data, which we can, we will really use to make these maps until the end of September, because that's when the official census numbers come out. What we are working with between now and then are estimates, and those estimates can be wildly inaccurate. So we're basically going to be doing practice exercises between now and then, hoping that those estimates are going to be accurate. And um, if they are, if they are accurate, and we get the official data at the end of September, and we compare the data, and it's all good, then we'll be sitting pretty. If the data do not compare well, we're going to probably have to start all over again, and at the end of September, and rush like crazy to get it done. So I guess so. I just have a related question. So I'd seen on the Census Bureau website, right, that they're not promising the redistricting data to the states until the end of September. So it's, is it likely or possible based on your past experience like that that could slide too, or? Um, probably not. There's okay. been room, there's been rumors that it's actually gonna come out early. Um, Yay. <laughs> but I would not hold my breath on that one. Um, they're usually pretty good at getting it out by the deadline. And if they don't, then there's no way that the state, I don't think there's any way that the state can hold our feet to the fire of that October 31st deadline. That that would, especially if the data do not compare, um, that, would, that would be very difficult because this is being done for 351 municipalities across Massachusetts. And the Secretary of State's office is doing this work for the vast majority of those cities and towns. Um, we are kind of in the minority in that the town is taking on the work and we're going to be do drawing the lines. So um, yeah, I don't, okay. if it came out late, I don't see how the Secretary of State's office would be able to get it done in a timely manner. Sure. And it wouldn't, I mean, it's not, it wouldn't affect anything until like the 2022 elections, right? So it's, it's a little Correct. interesting that the deadline is right before the November Correct. So local elections. the work <laughs> so. in the, the work in the, I know, the work in the boundary line drawing that we will be doing do not affect this November election. And in fact, mm -hmm. they will not take effect until December, December 31st, 2021. So, okay. Yeah. I also I wanted to mention that um, the town council has to vote on this. So we need to get this to the town council and then have their final say by October 30th or whatever the date is. So we need to, I would say to shoot for mid October to be done. So I have a, that was my question. One, do we have to make it public? So do we, do we need to allow some time for public comment from residents before we send it to the town council? Like to have a, have a week or two to, so that we can, before the final map is sent to the council for voting, whether we would need to have public input or share it out. And two, um, that it, yeah. Okay, I was gonna say we we do have to allow for public comment at every meeting. Um, that was one of the things I wanted to talk about 
But um, I think we should move on with electing our chair and getting that done because we're going way off <laughs> tangent here and co-chair and minute taker so that we get the structure out of the way. And then we can talk about all the different things that we would like to do. Um, Cause I, yeah, so I, before I jump into that again. So Irene has nominated herself as chair and Tracy and Peggy both still vying for co-chair. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Okay. If Peggy wants to be co-chair, that's fine with me. <laughs> so are you about I, I will withdraw my okay. Self okay. All right. So um if we don't have any other nominations, we do need to vote. Okay, so um I'll I'll do roll call vote. I'll call you by name and you can say I or an A or yes or no, however you want to do it. Um and those can that can vote. So Tammy Parks. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? Did I get a second? I didn't get a second, did I? No. Okay. Second. I need to... Thank you. Well, you're second thing yourself. I second. Yeah, that, that's Thank our problem. Like, I can second myself. No, right? that's right. Just a second. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now we can vote. Okay. So, um, Tammy Parks? You're muted, Tammy. Aye. Okay. Irene? Aye. All right. Peggy? Uh, were you voting on Irene right now? You're voting on um, Irene as chair and you as co-chair. Okay, aye. The whole package. <laughs> All right, Tracy? Aye. Okay, and Joseph? Aye. All right, it's unanimous. All right, welcome new chair Irene and new co-chair Peggy. And with that, um, I'll turn the meeting over to the two of you. We should find someone who's going to take minutes. We'll have to vote on that next. So I'm done. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we need nominations for minute takers. I'm I'm happy to nominate myself. Okay. We have a second. I'll second, second that. Okay. So I guess we vote now. Um, Tammy Parks. Aye. Peggy, Shannon? Aye. Tracy? Aye. Safian? Um, I don't know if, Joseph, you can vote on yourself. I say aye. And I'm learning how to do this. Um, can uh, Joseph vote on him for himself? Yes. Yeah. OK, Joseph? Uh, aye. So it passes. Yes. Okay, so we have a minute taker and that's it, right? That's it. And I'm happy to share what's come before this point, Joseph. Um, when you go to do the minutes from this meeting, I'll, I'll type up what I have before this and give it to you, okay? Sounds great. Okay. Okay, so we need, I'm opening, I don't even have the agenda open. So I want to apologize, I need to get the agenda. So we need to discuss according to the agenda, the, the regulations and rules of procedures, and we have to establish them. Um, we already talked about timeline and we need to talk about duties and the package material. Um, since I'm not the expert, I'm learning about this. Uh, Susan, um, is there anything that we should know? Um, so, yes, what I was going to, um, so it says any regulations or rules of procedure so that we may want to establish if we don't have to, but um, things, well, I was modeling that on, um, so hold on one second. So for instance, the town council has a whole they have a whole bunch of rules and regulations, um, rules of procedure, but one of which is public participation. So something to think about because we're gonna be moving fast and furious and we have a lot of information to tackle in a very short period of time. We may wanna set up some kind of um, um, outline that documents the length of public comment, the time, um, how many times people can speak, um, you know, whether we want, need to recognize them first. I'm just reading from the town council, just getting ideas. And um, so, you know, we, this is something you can vote on today or you can look it up further and then vote on at the next meeting as to how to structure this. 
but I thought that was a great idea to have something in writing that documents that we're only going to allow so much time per meeting because otherwise um, depends on what, you know, you could spend conceivably a half an hour in a two hour meeting and that's a half an hour of time that's taken away for the work that you have to do. So stuff to think about. So that, that's, that I was. Guess, yeah. Is there, um, is there any other way that the public can give input besides public comment to us? Because it feels to me like if, you know, this committee has, has to be very receptive to the public. I, I mean, that's, it's a, that's in our constitution. So if we limit the amount of time of public comment, um, that doesn't feel right to me unless there's another easy alternative. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's so, something you definitely can put in writing, yeah. So we can um, invite public comment in other ways, is that what you're saying? Well, section 9.12 of the charter, it just says that it allows for multiple member bodies to promulgate rules that regulate the period of co public comment. So I would think based on that, you could also state how you would receive public comment. Well, can we have, for example, an email address for the committee that people could write us at the email address? We don't support that anymore, any longer, Sue. That's no longer supported. Um, so what happens now is emails need to go through the staff liaison. So Sue, you're, if you're the staff liaison, um, Why? If that's just the IT department's policy at this point um, for managing email addresses like, you know, this would be dab at amherstma.gov that the town manager and does not want to support that anymore. But then, then it's a double burden. So we are putting burden and Susan on filtering and compiling all the emails. Can we set a Gmail account? I know it doesn't look official, but are we allowed to set up a Gmail account? For well, the one of the main reasons, Irene, is um, the things being public record. Yeah. Um, so communication. So what happened with other boards and committees is emails would come in from the public. They would hit this DAB at AmherstMA.gov and they would get distributed to people outside of town, their personal emails. And there's no public records trail there. It, it, it does not touch the town of Amherst's email system at all. So by, send, by the public sending things to the staff liaison, everything gets recorded. If somebody wanted to do a public records request and get all the emails regarding this committee, it could be filtered that way. So what, anyway. so you're saying if they are being forward, so if they're being received by the town and then forwarding to our emails, then there's no track. If the way if we were to set up an email that's like dab at amherstma.gov, it it never hits the town's database. It it How bounces come? off it bounces off of it and goes directly to you folks. And so, basically, there's no way for us to query that those public records to see um, what the content of those emails were from the members of the public. So even though it's an ma.gov email, it's not. It's not really an email. Like, yeah, I mean, exactly. Okay. Uh, and what happens if it's just so that for Susan, the, if I don't know, maybe we don't get any email, maybe we get 20 emails, right? I don't, I don't know how it's going to go. I know school committee emails, sometimes they have 50 emails. So um, in order not to lose track, can an email be set up so that, but not forwarded? So if an email, but then there is, so it's a distinguishing email, but it's not being forwarded to us. And then Susan can, this, the liaison, she can access it with another account, but it's an email that is only this. So it, then it's very easy to track. Okay, all the emails to the DAB right. are there. Yeah, it doesn't I, have to be forwarded. But I mean, also, also, if she has problems accessing it because she's very busy, she can give the login. So my concern is if Susan is busy with this coming town election, so if there are other things on the way, she can say, okay, the login is this one. Yeah. So um, somebody else can access it and, and read and see if there's anything relevant. Yeah. We, can, we can ask, um, um, and this will, this will need to go 
to the town manager to be approved. Um, I can tell you the last time this was declined. So we can ask I would, that. I mean, I think one challenge would be, I mean, I understand this because I know I've tried to contact certain committees and they don't have like gen yeah. general emails anymore, mm -hmm. but um, it is a burden on the staff liaison, but also yeah. from an open meeting law perspective, like if you don't have a dedicated email address and I'm sure if we are using town clerk at amherstma.gov mm -hmm. or something like sue also gets a lot of other email mm -hmm. so yeah. i mean i would i mean if i mean i think it's great you know not to it's good that there is a procedure in place with the liaison but but even from an open meeting law perspective it would take sue sue had to look at town clerk at her town clerk email to pull up all the dab emails that mm -hmm. would take some time yeah so, so, I mean, so we'll, even if they, even if there's like a secondary email in the town clerk's office or something, at least mm -hmm. those messages would just congregate there and not in the main account or something. But yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. Um, my, <laughs> you know, in election season, we have I vote mean, at Amherst. Exactly. Is that something or is that what you're saying is not allowed anymore? Uh, it was it's specifically for boards and committees. Sue, it's, okay. it was the is the the newest rule. It's been this okay. way for about four months or five months or something. Sure. But we can we can ask. Um, this most recently happened with the the elementary school building committee or something. So then, yeah. So, so we can ask. That's so, Mike. You just said the policy now is that it goes to the liaison and then the liaison forwards them. Correct. That's the right. Okay. Correct. Well, you know, I have a districting, a redistricting folder already set up with all of this. So I'm just going to slide, click and drag and move it in there. And then I'll just forward it all off. You know, well, and, and you, we could, we could ask the public, whatever email address it is to put like DAB in the subject line or something. To yeah, help yeah but they might forget. So no, of course, the, the first option would be to have a dedicated email address that doesn't forward, but it can be accessed. So then it's dedicated. So if you can request that, and if not, we have to set up a, a, a procedure for emails. The other thing, limit. the other thing we could do is we could just build an online form that That's people true. would that people would fill out and hit submit, mm -hmm. and that form would automat we could automatically program in a subject line. You know, it would automatically append DAB to the beginning of it or something, um, and then that would get auto routed to to the staff liaison. Um, Oh, like but, a Google form or something. Yeah, we're a Microsoft organization, so it's right. Microsoft Forms. It's the same right. thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. I have a question regarding that. Doesn't usually have um, a, you need to add a layer of security people to log in so that you don't get spam. Usually forms that are not usually you don't have open forms on websites. Uh, yeah, we we do have open forms on our website. Um, but it's it's just another option to consider. Sure. I mean, I think. I mean, that option seems okay to me too. But yeah. I can. How about this? I'll ask around sure. to some of the okay. other committee, some of the other staff liaisons, and some of the other boards and committee folks that I work with, and see see what's working successfully for them. And I mean, and and we'll also ask about the the DAB at AmherstMA.gov as a as I mean, an example. One, one thing with. Um, because just given the calendar and the election, right? And now there's vote by mail. I mean, people are able to just email Sue at like town clerk at amherst.ma.gov to request like vote by mail. So I don't know. I would think that your email would be even busier. <laughs> but well, Tracy, we yeah. set up vote at Amherst. No, I know, but I'm not everybody yeah, will know yeah. that. I mean, no, I know that. I know. We get that. We, we check all our emails every day, all day long. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So the, the whole purpose of, I think, right. I think this committee is somewhat different because we are on a short timeline. Yes. We have uh, it's election season. So so it's going to get a lot of other emails at the same time. And we want to be clear and streamline the process and not overburden her. I would present it that, that way to the town manager. It's not the best. It's a long process of two years. This mm -hmm. is a very short Correct. time frame. Right. And and it conflicts on the same time scale, on the same timeline with other big things going on in town. So let's make life easier. Understood. <laughs> and I've already I've found the email thread of the last request here. So I can just reply to this and um, to the town manager and see what we get. Yeah, and I'll, but I'll, I'll, I'll let you all know. Yeah, let the. So, 
So, I mean, in terms of other public input questions, um, so one question is, so in the past, have the redistricting uh, or the districting advisory boards from pre following previous censuses, have they had any kind of, I mean, to Irene's point earlier, have they had any um, like public forums or anything just to have an extended period of time where the public can provide input just because I'm expecting that our meetings will be pretty tight, particularly, you know, in the one month between, you know, the end of September and the end of October or even mid-October if we're trying to get that to the council. I'd have to look through, Sandra left a really thick binder, three ring binder full of stuff. And I'd have to look through it and see if there were any kind of forums or what, you know, but it was back in the day where it was in person, people would come and just be here and watch and listen. So um, yeah, I'll check it out and see what I can find. And I mean, it would be great to, you know, if, I mean, even for us, you know, to have access to the maps and then to have ways in which the public can look at maps too, like draft maps, like as we're getting to that Abs stage. Because absolutely. I mean, I know, and it's hard at, you know, in terms of how people can access that information at like a detailed level. <laughs> so yeah, not just like screenshots or something, but. No, historically, I, I believe they've always posted the different versions okay. of things that, so, you know, you start with this, you go to this, you go to this, you go to this. And my understanding is it, typically leads to a lot more questions than it does, but I think we should be transparent and post all of that mm -hmm, stuff. Um, right. This is this is our work in progress, and yeah. this is where we started. This is where we got to, uh, map-wise, um, because that's the that's the final deliverable. So uh, absolutely. So to speak to that, Mark uh, and everyone. So from my understanding, in 2011, there were quite there was quite a bit of information available, and um, the public was able to comment more freely. So I guess I'm advocating as someone who's representing the Board of Registrars and who are simply interested in protecting the vote and assuring transparency in this town. Um, that we figure out a way. I um, understand I'm a non-voting member, but there's a way to be figured out where the public can have access to the materials to be able to make informed uh, comments and decisions, um, at least to be able to uh, help shape our understanding as well. So um, I would just, you know, I've been listening, <laughs> but 2011, there was more of an independence in terms of what was available information wise to the public and how the public was able to comment. So that's that's so, what I'd like to, to add. So D, how was that information made available to the public in 2011? Like were the maps posted in the library or people had to come to the meeting or what? So I think they must have been, uh, probably how town meeting was set up, uh, not town meeting, well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> back then uh, where you would, uh, they were printed out. So um, now everything is digital. So we certainly can make those available online. I did see where the town website uh, for this meeting did have uh, the, the state information from Gavin as, as well. So yeah, I would just, you know, again, stress that if this is about transparency and if it's not transparent, this is Amherst. Right. You know, that's that's not going to be a good thing for anyone. Right. Um, so I would just really, you know, caution. And uh, again, as someone that is on the board of registrar for that reason, um, that that we try to assure as much transparency and participation as, as we can. Speaking of which, Sue, uh, I think you inadvertently knocked Adrian Terezzi off the public Zoom. So she doesn't want to comment, but she can participate in the public Zoom, can't she? As an attendee? She yeah. Can, yeah. She can. Well, she's she can't get back on. Uh, that happens if you kick somebody out after being an attendee, you cannot log in back again. Oh. So no, but what, well, what, what Sue should have done is just um, like decreased her status, not like yeah. kicked her out. Yeah. Oh, kick, yeah. oh, whoops. I'm okay. still learning how to do all this. All right. Stuff. Yeah, you okay. don't want to kick somebody out. You just want to make them not a panelist. Yeah. So that's all I wanted to share. Thank you. So, so Demetria, to to your point, I think I think we we will absolutely publish every every map that we produce and that we work on and that we talk about. We'll put online with 
obviously with all the agenda and minutes and stuff. And then we can, we can also physically print copies and put them at the library and put them at the senior center and put them in town hall, like on the wall, right by the clerk's office. You know, we, we, we can do all of those sort of things. So we should, we should come up with a procedure. We're, we're 100% going to put them on the website, but if we want to print materials and hang them somewhere, we should think about physically where we want to put those so that the public can go there and look at them in person. I because think that's a great idea, uh, Mike, and, and also, like I said, about, you know, public uh, comment or comments in general, there should be a way to independently uh, have as much as we can have those available. Um, I don't know what happened four months ago and why that suddenly became the policy, but, um, you know, it's important that folks communicate with the chairs and the committee. So. So Sue, a related question to that. So with the district and advisory board, you said that you had gone on the website for the committee and um, like cleaned it up and removed some of the stuff from the last time. Like, is it actually still in the archives though? It like is. if anybody wanted to look up how the procedures were done before? Pretty sure I unpublished them. I didn't delete them. So then if they're unpublished, how can people access them? Mike, if I unpublish them from the archive center, do I need to put them into the document center? Um, we should probably just publish them, republish them. Um, yeah. That's a I'm, that's a question for Brianna. Um, yeah. She knows the really the intricacies of that. We, we yeah, can I'll talk to her out. tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, I would think you'd want to keep them. I mean, it's, yes, when yeah. I went to the website at first, it says, oh, these are these 10 year old agendas yeah. and so on. But that does show what the process was. Yeah, we may want to we, we may want to branch it out and have, right. you know, it's the same board name, but it's yeah, it's, exactly. It's kind of like a different board it's no, this is the 2021 right. Or, right you know we could maybe, we could have a different name or something right. but just to yeah. still have them there in the archives I absolutely think it's helpful yeah yep. i think it just will we'll have folders for years right mm -hmm. every 10 yeah. years yeah so yeah, okay. getting back to the original point which is do we want to um set some rules and regulations about public input at our meetings i would suggest that we wait on that and see if it turns out to be an issue. I don't want to do anything to discourage public input at this point. And if it turns out that we need to do that for time considerations, we could do it then. Right. I, that's a motion. Um, you want to make a motion? Sure, I'll make that a motion. Okay, second. <laughs> second. Well, yeah, so I just, I have one. Well, we could we could have a motion on this, but I do have one related comment. Yes. Like, or suggestion. Sorry, I should I should have access. I no. Um, so my my comment would just be just in general. I know we're still filling out how involved the public will want to be and how people will want to provide feedback. I mean, one suggestion I have is that, and I've seen this on some other committee agendas, is that they have a public comment period both at the beginning of the meeting and at the end of the meeting. So if people have listened in to the discussion and then they want to, they realize that they have comments based on what they've just heard and seen and so on, that they do have an opportunity to comment before the meeting adjourns. So maybe that could be a separate motion. What do you guys think? I, um, I think that makes sense. Yeah. In the end, it'll all come down to time, how much time we have. No, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Everybody's okay with the, do we have to vote on this or we postpone a vote until uh, for regulations until I'm new, please correct me. Um, first, well, time no, I'm chair, we... first time I'm chairing anything. So please, I don't know if we need to vote or we, we decide to postpone any vote until we, this. Why don't we, any. I'd like to make a motion that we include a public comment period at the end of each of our meeting agendas at the end of our meetings. Okay. If anybody wants to second that. Uh, I would second that. Okay. So we are voting, we're going to be voting on the two things together or only? Um, I think one at a time. Yes. So uh, let's vote on Tracy's proposal first because that was the last one that was second, I think. Okay. Um, that is to have a uh, public comment at the beginning and at the end of each meeting. Um, I'm gonna call Peggy Shannon. 
Hi. Tracy. I'm I'm Hi. Tracy. Joseph Gordon. Hi. Uh, Patty Tammy Parks. Hi. And I. I. And we had another motion that it was from Peggy Shannon about um, postponing any decision until um, we figure out that we need to put rules and regulations, if we need to put other rules and regulations. Um, but I don't know if we have to vote on that. Yeah, I don't, that doesn't really seem like something we need to have a motion on. We could just have it on the yeah, agenda for next time like and then so create we, a motion about something yeah, so, we're gonna do. <laughs> so I think it is, that should be a standing item on the agenda. Um, so then in case we need to set up some rules, we can do it for next time. Okay. I would like to, to make one comment about that. Yes. And that is, I think it is good to set up a time limit for how long people share. And I think it's better to do it before the meeting start because it can seem punitive to someone who shares a lot and then you suddenly take a vote and say, we're not gonna share that long. I know in the ZBA, I think it's two or three minutes um, for someone to share. And then there's also some, something about, you know, if it's a new share, you know, so that people don't uh, kind of repeat the same thing. So um, I, 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 I guess what I'm suggesting is that we pick a time limit for people to speak before the meetings begin. And okay. after, I mean, during any of our public comment periods, right? So people yeah. would be comfortable sharing is setting up uh, now a time limit. And it's, yes. okay. So the motion is to set up a time limit of three minutes. So per, this is, this is three minutes per person, right? So somebody person. wants to make a comment, they have, they have three minutes, minutes to do that. To do, yes, to make three minutes per person for comment. Um, yeah. That's reasonable. And that's, um, to interject, that's what I was trying to say. I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. <laughs> uh, that's what the, that's, I was referring to the town council procedures. And that's one of the things they said, link the public comment up to three minutes, depending on, you know, number of public comments, one per person per comment period. Um, so yeah, th those were two of the points that I was trying to make okay. earlier. <laughs> Sorry, Sue, I guess I misunderstood. Yeah. No, that's okay. Yeah. I don't want to limit at this point, I don't want to put a limit on the number of times a person can talk because we might need to a conversation and we, I don't want to, I'm not in favor, but I don't know how the other people in the committee are feeling. I think it's fine to just make a motion that it's a three minute limit per, yeah. per share. Yeah. Per, you know. Okay. And I think we'll just also have to see, I mean, if, I mean, yes, meetings can be taking up a lot of time with public comment if everybody wants to make a three minute comment. Um, so I think if that's the case, and if we do have a lot of people wanting to come to meetings and make comments, then we will, we really should be looking at like other opportunities for comment, including forums and other outreach that we can do because we can't yeah. dedicate a whole meeting to public comment as important as that is. So I don't really want to cut people off, but we, I guess we'll just have to take it by, we'll just have to see if it becomes an issue that too much of our meeting is taken up with comment. Okay. okay. So somebody wants to share a uh, second then the motion of having a limit of three minutes per share. A second. Um, Joseph, so I'm gonna call Joseph Gordon. Uh, for the vote, uh, yes. Uh, aye. Tracy Safin. Yeah, me too, Tracy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I got. Yeah, I think we we could also revisit that if we don't have, you know, many people. But okay. as a starting place, I think that's okay. I think as a starting place, okay. Uh, Peggy Shannon. Aye. Tommy Parks. Aye. And I, I. Okay. So for what seems to be the structure, if I'm reading correct, for the meetings, it's going to be we're going to have public comment at the beginning and at the end with three minute 
um, times for sharing each time that people want to talk or share. And this is going to be revised as needed in future meetings based on the public uh, comments that we get. Okay. Um, um, the next item on the agenda was timeline. Uh, we started talking before about the timeline. I wonder if um, we need to, we know, we know that um, we have to deliver by October 31st and the town council needs to vote on this. So can we request, would I be requesting that the town council puts it on their agenda? So we are on the agenda of the town council uh, on the last week of October. I don't know if they have the meetings already planned that far ahead. I don't think, I mean, I, I don't think we need to do it at this time, but um, I mean, the council typically meets like every other week. Sometimes now they're meeting in the summer, they're meeting, I think every three weeks and sometimes they meet every week. They do plan out the agenda in advance. And so it is good to be in touch with the council president in terms of like where we think that that would be. Um, because we want to make sure that we they are not voting on October 31st or we are they are not voting on October 30th. So we need to look at the their schedule and we need to make sure mm -hmm. that we have some yes. because they, if they have comments, we need to be able to meet one more time just in case. So maybe to have a back and forth. That's I don't know if we might well, and they also the council they also have a procedure under the council rules of procedure that they need to have an item come before the council twice before they vote on it. They can choose if a timeline is tight to um, not follow that rule, but like typically that's the rule. And I think also that we should probably look to it going to the council twice just to fulfill that rule, but also because that gives people, that gives the public more opportunity to comment. But the major, the major issue with that is that if they meet every other week. No, no, I agree. I'm, I'm checking the council's schedule right now. Okay, great. Thanks, Tracy. Yeah, Irene, as, as chair, you can be in touch with actually the clerk of the council, Athena Oki, and discuss with her when she would need this spy to put it on the agenda. Her email, if you want it, it's all, all our emails are our last name and our first initial. Okay, can you repeat the name? Sure, it's, so it's O'Keefe, so it's O-K-E-E-F-F-E, -E -E, and then A for Athena, at okay. amherstma.gov. Okay. okay. So the, the um, time frame with the council, which this is not going to work very well with our time frame and with the council rule that requires it to come before the council twice, is that the council currently has meetings scheduled on September 27th. Um, and then they have a meeting on October 4th. They have a meeting on October 18th. And then because of the election, they do not have their next meeting until November 8th. So, so we need uh so maybe we could we could maybe request that they have an additional meeting. So that might be a good thing to be in touch with Athena and also the um, president of the council about Lynn Grismore. Yeah, because we need to have one the week before. Yeah, it's just not going to you know that time yeah. frame doesn't work at all with the information that we're going to be getting. Yeah. So okay. if they if they could have an additional meeting on say the twenty fifth something like that, then we could perhaps give them something on the 18th and that gives a week for public input and the council to consider things before the 25th. But for us, it's gonna be very tight because if we get the results, if we get the final information on the, on the last week of September, if we have to give them something on the 18th, that gives us 18 days for yeah. actual work. Yeah, it's uh, miserable. Um, so, well, maybe as Mike said, it will come early. Who knows? Get lucky. <laughs> you're, you're optimistic. <laughs> um, okay, so yes. Can I just ask Sue, in, uh, so 10 years ago when this was done, how many meetings, how did they set up the meetings to make this work? 
I mean, were they meeting once a week, twice a week? I don't know, Tammy. I wasn't, it was Sandra at the time. I wasn't involved at all. I know they met in the first floor meeting room and I know she came out of there pulling her hair out of her. <laughs> but um, <laughs> they, they met, um, I, I'd have to look. Um, I just wondered if there was a, a way that we can think about it. And I'm also wondering how long we're gonna have meetings be. Um, because I, you know, like, I, you know, when I was on town meeting, you know, sometimes running until 10 o'clock was not great. So I'm just wondering how we want to structure the meeting time. For me, I, I work and I'm on other committees. And so, you know, I can't do Thursdays. It's never going to happen. Right. So real quick, Tammy, just about how often they met, um, from what I understand, and this is something to check in the archives, they met weekly. So, um, you know, that might be something that you all need to, to decide how often and how long, but um, particularly the first, the first meetings, um, the uh, first two to three months, they met weekly. And does it say how long their meetings were? That I'm not sure. I think we, we need to check those archives. And that's 10 years ago. So um... I'll just say for that for me, I, I, I work at a college and I work in student life and September is the very busiest time. And so I need to know, like right now, today, if I put on my calendar that I'm gonna be out every single Wednesday at a certain time, it will work. But, Doing it week to week, I, I'm gonna it'll get bumped every week. So I'm hoping that we can come out of this picking a time every single week that we can meet until October 31st, because that I can that I can manage easily. But not you know having it changeable times it also does not work for me. Yes, I would agree. And yes. I mean that's not an official item on our agenda, but that's something we should talk about having like a standing meeting time. Yeah, for the duration. I think I think we, I would propose that we set, set up a when to meet um, because not everybody is here today. Right. Um, we can decide. Maybe we can make it easier trying to figure out what times we might be able to meet. Um, of uh, I would prefer not during working hours. I don't know if that is having an impact on the other people on the committee that are not here today because right now it's 3.30. Uh, but I would say we would should set up and uh, trying to find a time that we cannot meet and set up it up as a fixed time schedule for the remainder of the time. We if could you... propose, if, if there's no a single time that everybody can meet, maybe we have to have alternating like one week, one schedule, another week another schedule to try to maximize the participation of everybody in the committee. Yes. Would it be easier if you all email me what your availability is during the week, day and time, day and night, and I can look at it and see if there's a common? I, I would suggest, I mean, that's a pretty huge yeah. calendar. I mean, I would suggest actually checking like Sue and Mike, if you want to tell us like your general availability. Um, during the week, you know, in terms of what slots you are available, particularly as some people have asked for like outside of working hours, like in evening hours, and then That's, we could go, we could yeah. go, we could just go with that if that works, if that works for you at all, Mike. I mean, that's fine. That's, I mean, that's what I have to do. That's that's totally fine. I mean, I'm I'm in IT. I'm on call 24 seven every uh, day. So <laughs> that's okay. But just I mean, that's like okay. I'm sure Sue that like sometimes you have conflicts with standing obligations or whatever. If we want to, no, no I, I, I I like just like so. what, what Tammy said for me. As long as we nail it, if we if it's going to be an after hours thing, I, you know, I have two young children. As long as we nail it down and I, we have a plan, mm -hmm, sure, it'll work. Um, so same here. Same or here. maybe even like 4 p.m. or something, we could offer, you know, some slots that are towards the end of the day or something, not, you know, six or seven or eight. Yeah, because you have to think about. So, too. I mean, the council's meet, the council meets on Monday. So, I would think that we wouldn't want to do it on the night the council meets, even though they don't meet every Monday. We don't want to do a Friday either. We don't want to do a Friday. <laughs> and I, I have know. CPA meetings on Thursday. I mean, I have a lot of conflicts oh. on Thursdays. Me too. Well, that's Tuesday. narrowing it down. Tuesday yeah. Better. I think we'd um, need to look at like Tuesdays yeah. or Wednesdays, probably. Does that I'm make sorry, sense what, to people? What did you say, jo Joseph? 
Oh, I just mentioned if Tuesdays were better since I heard a lot of people were having conflicts on Thursdays. Uh -huh. And and Demetria, are you the after hours thing or during the day? Does that matter? Um, right right now, I'm flexible, but I I would need to narrow it down as my courses um, as an adjunct are getting <laughs> pretty narrowed down. Um, Thursdays are no good for me. I usually have other board meetings on Thursdays. Okay. So it sounds like we're looking at Tuesdays or Wednesdays yes. for people, um, preferably later in the day or in the evening, but it sounds like we'd like to get uh, clarity also from the people who aren't here. Yeah. Right. Okay. Can we send... Sounds and good. Can, uh, can we send up a poll regarding uh, between 4 and 8 p.m.? That would be okay with everybody? Or eight, between 4 and 8.30 or 9? So people mark the calendars on Wednesdays and yeah. Tuesdays. I mean, I guess, I mean, that's narrowed down enough. I mean, Sue, if you felt comfortable, maybe. Yeah. You could send out an email and just say, we're looking for uh -huh. meetings that would start. <coughs> I, would pre I would prefer a meeting not start at 8 because like if we have no 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 finishing no 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 <laughs> yeah. what i'm saying is crazy uh, i'm no, saying I got it. <laughs> i'm saying it's trying to finish by eight or yeah. nine eight so, at eight or nine yes yeah, the latest start time sure. would be 7 like, p.m yes that would, be the, that would be the latest start time would be 7 p.m and maybe start early start time would be 4 p.m okay that i will way. email those not here and see how their schedule looks for Tuesdays and Wednesdays, any time to start between 4 and 7 p.m. Um, real yeah. quick, I just, you know, again, uh, on the on the side of transparency, people are, we're, of course, the committee and we're, we're serving, but also just to have the public weigh in, it's going to be even more important to have a means outside of the times in which we are meeting for the public to weigh in, okay? So I think that it's it's important, again, that that gets solved because um, a lot of folks are available during the day as opposed to in the evening as well when they, like Mike, have small children or other obligations. So that's, that's all I'm saying, just different ways uh, and availability for the public. Dimitri, you're suggesting that we have kind of a, we cannot have office hours because. Um, uh, right. I think we cannot have office hours because of public meeting law and one person being. Um, so what you're suggesting is to have alternate times of meetings so that we could catch people that's oftentimes the case with with committees to to have folks within the public be able to weigh in and attend and participate even you know whether it's through the public comment or to listen in as attendees but what i'm also saying is that it will be important to have a means in which the public are able to offer commentary when we are not meeting since there's a small window of time in which you all are setting um, the, the availability, okay? And it won't be meeting alternatively. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You're the committee. But what I'm saying is that we need to make ourselves, you all, available somehow to the public. I'm sure this is going to be recorded. It will be uploaded. Uh, so they'll be able to watch it afterwards. And so most likely their comments based on the previous um, uh, meeting. So, you know, you just have to kind of keep in mind um, that although people didn't attend that meeting because they're not available to attend that meeting and there was no public comment because people couldn't attend the meeting, that doesn't mean they don't have an opinion and an opinion that they would like to share and communicate to the committee. Um, until we sort of get more information from Mike about possibly having an email set up, is it for the time being okay, do you think, to have public comments sent to our staff liaison until we sort of get more information on if we can like have our own email address? 
Sue, are mm -hmm. are you listed as the staff liaison on the on the DAB page? I'm actually not listed as. A so well, that's that's the I? that's a really important component, you so, know. So, for, let so, me look. Let me look. The DAB page. I am. I am town clerk staff liaison. Okay. Okay. So it's there. Um. Can it be clear that email should be sent to there? Can we put a comment that email should be sent there if on the web page? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can we can run that by Brianna. Brianna has been setting things up. Okay. Yeah. And oh. that that's the other question I have um, regarding the material on the page. Uh, when I was on the school building feasibility study, uh, members of the community, a couple of members of the community had access to set up things on the page so that we didn't depend on Brianna on uploading documents. I had I had privileges to upload all the documents for the feasibility study. I managed the page. Oh. Um, so I don't know if we could have something like that. I know the recordings, it would have to be you, but to post the agendas and any other document to make sure that everything's posted on time. Can, we're gonna to have to depend on Brianna or um, Mike can do it every week before we meet, make sure that everything is posted. You're talking about all the materials for the board? Yeah, so everything yeah. that we see to be posted on the website, everything that we see should be posted on the board at the same time. So that's, that's what I was going to do. I'm fine with that, but I mean, if I can share the duties, I'm happy with that too. I'll be publishing the meetings, you know, posting the meetings once we get the agenda together. Um, but then as far as uploading all of the materials we're using, if you want to share those duties, if it's possible for you to get the permissions, I'm happy to share. I, 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 me or I don't know if Mike, when he's creating the maps to upload them, that's a way of mm -hmm. instead of disseminating to us via email and having that we can go to the website and see everything, the material, the same way that the public is going to see the material. Mm -hmm. Can that be done that way? There's multiple different ways that we can do it. Um, I have seen it that um, members, you, you know, someone like yourself, Irene, could could load the documents um, and edit the website. I've seen that done. I will have to run it by uh, Brianna to see what the policy what the policy currently is. Um, but there's there's multiple people here that could potentially manage that stuff. And me, Sue. Um, I, I was uh, suggesting you because you're going to be creating the maps. Sure. That's, yeah. So that's why I was volunteering you. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I, okay. I will definitely be uploading certain things there, probably all the maps. Um, Since you've been going to create so that we make sure that everything is public and everything is very uh -huh. transparent, right. that uh -huh. the moment if we're going to get a document, it should be posted there Correct. first. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, because on our emails might get lost. Yes, Tracy. Um, oh, and just to the point that uh, Disha Bosch brought up about um, the recordings of the meetings, like if we could, I know that, you know, s some committees, the meetings don't get, the videos don't get posted like very, very soon after meetings. You know, it can, there can be like a huge delay, but because this does involve elections and people can feel so strongly about elections and election rights and so on if these could be like prioritized for posting as soon as possible after meetings, that would be really helpful. Yep. And, I, and I understand that there's many committees, but so. Yeah, 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 that's, a, um, that's something where um, after every meeting, I can put it on my to-do list to put in, we have a ticketing system in IT and oh. it's, it's up to staff liaisons to communicate with IT that a recording is ready to be uploaded to YouTube. Um, so that doesn't always happen, um, but I can put it on my note to create a ticket to upload oh. the upload the recording to YouTube as you know as soon as the meeting's over with, okay, and then great. somebody okay. from the IT staff will load that as soon as possible. No, thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. So, Mike, when this is um, when I get it, because I set up the meeting, I'll get the recording. I'll just forward it to you each time. I don't even think you need to forward it because I think our team can, we have admin access to Zoom. Oh, right. I think we can we can go in and grab any recording. Okay, good. It's just that there's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So 
I guess the next item is to discuss the package material. So I want to be conscious of the time is 350, but I think it's very important. So the two items that we need to discuss today, one is the package of the material. Two, we would have to see, uh, set up our, in principle, maybe we could have to do is set up a tentative meeting for next week. I would prefer to do that. We can go come back to later so that to keep the momentum going fast until we get the, the final schedule. And what are our next steps? What's our to do before next meeting? I think those are the three items that we need to discuss right now. Am I missing something? I hadn't planned to be chair, so I'm going along, along the way. So uh, you're doing great. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> you're doing a great job. Yes. <laughs> okay, great. So um, the material. Um, I have it as a PDF. I have it as a PDF open as multiple PDFs if we if we need me to share my screen. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know if anybody has questions. I have several questions, but I want to Shall we go over the material all together and if, try to see if Susan can can answer our questions or? Probably will be Mike, but yes, Mike, do which which document do you want to look at first? Well, so there, let me share my screen here. Um, can everyone see uh, the precinct map, the district and precinct map? Yes. Okay. So there are three PDFs that were a part of the agenda packet, I believe. There was the voting in district, districts and precincts map. There was this presentation from the secretaries of state. And there was this kind of this fact, I call this a fact sheet from Secretary Galvin's office. Um, I imagine most of your, if any of you have any questions, uh, it's probably going to be from this content of this fact sheet or the contents of this um, big presentation. But um, I personally thought that looking at the current map is a good way to start. I don't know how familiar with people, I didn't know how familiar people were with what districts are and what precincts are. Um, it sounds like a lot of you are pretty experienced and understand it, but um, I don't know, that was just the way I was kind of approaching today um, and, and reviewing things, like kind of starting with this and then going into more detailed questions. Mm -hmm. So can somebody just speak a little bit to this, the emails that were circulated yesterday about the idea that we may have to have the 15 precincts? Yes. Um, so the, st the secretary's office reached out to us in April or May and shared a preliminary, basically they reach out to every city in town and they say, hey, your projected population is going to be X. And that means you need to change your precincts or you can leave your precincts alone. And they told us that our population number had increased to the point where we need to add two districts or okay. I'm sorry, two, two precincts. I'm going to make that mistake a lot. <laughs> we need to add two precincts. And that kind of messes with the geography that we currently have now, which is that precincts nest perfectly within districts. Districts are the dark blue lines and the precincts nest within them perfectly. So we reached out to the, we replied to the, to the secretary's office and said, can we go with 15 instead? can you produce a, a, a rough draft of a map that would be 15? And that's what they did for us. As, as, a, as a starting foundation, they, they do that sort of exercise with every all 351 cities and towns in, in the Commonwealth, so. Okay, so I get, so what, what Galvin's office is saying is that you can only, so, under state laws, I guess, right, that each precinct has to have its own voting or each, like its own poll workers and so on, like its own polling place, even though sometimes they're co-located. Is that correct? So, that so 
and so it's based on like after you hit like after i guess you hit a certain number like a certain population number say like 1200 people or 13 whatever the number, the cutoff is and that says okay now you need to have a new precinct you can't have a precinct with say like 2000 or 3000 people or whatever is that right i'm just trying to the, make sure i understand yes the number oh. is the max sorry no go ahead the maximum number of people that can be in a precinct is 4000 okay? okay so there's there's two important statistics. One is the maximum number of people that you can have in a precinct is 4,000. The second number is what makes it complicated is that the, the variance between all the different precincts, they all have to have as close, they have to be within 5%, 5% difference of each other. So oh. for example, you can't have one district that has, or one precinct that has a thousand people in it and one precinct that has 4,000 people in it. They all need to be very close together number wise, statistic, population wise. So, so Mike, I have a question regarding that because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it was uh, when they made the chart that that was a mistake of making five precincts because it, districts, because it was clear that the population was gonna go over the 40,000 soon and we would need more precincts very soon. Mm -hmm. But now we are stuck with that. Now, the problem that I have is that with 15 precincts, uh, the 5% is, so 15 precincts is about 2,800 people per precinct, right? So 5% is 140 people. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's very, with 140, variability of less than 140 between precincts, what happened if that's a building less than Correct. a building exactly so that's less than a building uh, uh how do we go about with the we know that the people have submitted papers for new buildings how do we go because that tips the point correct that, that's more than one uh, the five percent difference so how do we go about that that's one of the things that we are supposed to consider when we're doing this this drawing of these lines is understanding where potential development is can where where properties can be developed what developments are currently in process like they're they, they may have been applied for um for example i believe there's a new set of umass dorms that are going up i believe in precinct 10 right now on the map that we're looking at i um, think 10 and, and three but or one i'm sorry say that again in i think in one mm -hmm. i think they're in one and in ten one in 10. And I mean, I, I believe mm -hmm. that the one that the, the one that's in number 10, I believe it's going to have 600 people, it's going to be able to house 600 students. So uh -huh. we have to factor that into our, our, our equations when we're drawing these boundaries. But how far? So the question is, how far down the line? Because you see, if that building won't come in into five years from now, mm -hmm. that's already maybe has to be taken into account in the next census whereas or if it's where do we put the line because we don't know what's going to be five that five years right. down the line we might know one yeah. or two years um i don't know the answer to that dimitri do you have a you have your hand raised yeah i it's Sorry. a clarifying question and hopefully mike since you are doing the maps you can provide this information is there a way to get a mapping of buildings that have been approved thus far um and the amount in terms of uh population potentially mm -hmm. uh for that the second question i have and and so you know the can can utilize that as a resource uh, the second question i have what what are the predicted where are the predicted areas of population we don't have a sense of that and won't have a sense of that uh until september um is there an idea of the population growth in certain sectors precincts and districts and otherwise it's right here it's umass that's so really UMass cool. having to do with the apartments that are being built for students, but or, no. Or are, or are you saying for new development, Demetria? Are you saying, so oh. there's there's both, yeah. So I know that there's at least two developments going on in UMass, but there's, there's um, other potential new developments. There's like a big apartment complex off of Southeast Street that is 
being proposed. There's the property off of one university drive south that's going to be able to hold 200 people or something like that. Um, so I've I've started the groundwork for gathering that data. I have okay. to reach out to our uh, planning department and our inspectors and say, hey, what's crossing your desk? As you know, are there any subdivisions that are going to be a bunch of single family homes that I've reached out and started that process? So you're saying, Mike, that the population growth is based on like we build it, they will come type of mentality and not Correct. actually uh, numbers of population growth in terms of people currently existing since 2011. Well, we have to, we have to factor in both. We have to. Yes, I understand right. that. Right. I just I know that there's a distinction, though, however. So, yes. yes. Yeah. OK. I don't know if this is in order, but are, Tracy, are you? Do you have another question? I think I think Peggy put her hand up first. So. Okay. Hi. Uh, sorry, I don't see. Okay. So I have a couple of questions. One is, um, I just want to be clear because of the how the charter is written and so on, we can't have a precinct that straddles two districts. Is that correct? So if if we need twelve precincts, we actually are going to need fifteen precincts. The is that right? Is that right? Actually, the charter does not say anything about precincts. It only says districts. I, I understand that. But given that um, precincts are a single voting place, but the, um, what our ballots look like depend on the districts, is it just um, basically a practicality that you can't have a precinct that straddles two districts? Can I speak? I mean, I would think yeah. that we would not want to have a that we would not want to have a precinct that straddles two districts. That we would no want, way. but we can, but we can adjust the district lines, because, for example, because we are electing, say, town council members at a district level, right? You would want everybody in a precinct to get the same ballot, and the only way they can all get the same ballot is if it's in the same district. Yeah, but you cannot divide twelve by divided by five. Right. Well, that, I mean, that's why exactly. that 15 was proposed. Well, we can yeah. we can adjust the boundaries of a district. Yeah, that's I mean, and we can adjust the boundaries of precincts. Just oh, to be yeah. clear, this we ha we have to do both. We yeah, have to draw so. district boundaries and precinct boundaries as part of this. What we have to deliver to the state by October 31st <laughs> is the precinct boundaries. But we have we, right. we we're going to need to draw the dark blue lines that you see on this map, as yeah. well as the 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 areas that the precincts that are shown on this map. We have to do both. So, okay. I still actually had another, well, yeah, go. Uh, more questions. My next uh, couple of questions. One is that um, in terms of the UMass population, um, if say UMass is putting in a new big dorm, is that considered permanent population in Amherst, even though that it's somewhat seasonal? I think for this, well, I think that so it depends where people are declaring their residency, like with Correct. the U.S. Okay. Census. So, for example, some college students will continue to be registered to vote and have their residency at their hometowns, like where their parents yeah. live. And then some will say that they now live in the town where they go to college. Is and in and, and the U.S. Census, right? I mean, so the dorms are all counted as like group living quarters. And so as they, they do count as residents. And they do count as housing units. So I think it's like one unit per quarter or something, but so they would count. Um, but I did, I did have a few questions. Well, I'd raise my hand too. Peggy, were you done? I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so one was that it is pretty interesting that the, the precincts are the lines like from the, the directive from Galvin's office and I guess it's probably state law is that the precincts are it's it's drawn by population and not just like voting age population right so like if you did have areas that had a lot of kids or something um that that that's going to shift our boundaries too and i also do wonder you know as part of um i mean i understand why they want there to be precincts so that everybody has good access to vote but if as voting by mail is increasing, like if the legislature does choose to make it permanent for local elections as well, um, like I wonder if they would change this like 4,000 people per precinct, like if 
if they would increase it to say like 5,000 people per precinct or 6,000 or something, just if it turns out that now and in the future, the populace will be voting much less in person than by mail. But that's just a side question. And I guess, and I do have a conceptual question just for my fellow committee members as we start to think about it is whether it makes whether it makes the most sense to start like thinking about precincts and how we'd want to and then come up with districts or whether to start with districts and then go to precincts. You know, in terms of like if we're trying to if we do decide to go with 12 or 15 and you know as been suggested by the town. Um, you know to cluster those and then after those precincts are created or at least drafted then to think about how they could be put into districts. So that's a conceptual question. And I, I also just had just um, one question just related to the emails that came out yesterday. So, you know, in um, in the email that was forwarded from Councillor Haneke, who had, you know, been involved with the Charter Commission, you know, so she had some advice to us um, based on her experiences. And, you know, she did have a number of things where she you know, in her email, she did say, no, I think you should look at this. I think you should look at this and so on. And so I wondered, does she have any official role beyond being a council member in turn in the redistricting process? Because her email did seem pretty directive. So I didn't know if yeah. she has been involved beyond being a counselor. So oh, can I speak? I put my hand up. Yes, please. Okay. Um, I first, before I answer that question, I just wanted to reference everybody to the um, Mass General Law, the sections 54, sections 1, 2, and um, 4 that we're going to be using to do this, because that pretty much describes um, dividing cities into um, voting precincts and districts. So that might answer some, some, you know, some of your questions. I know, Tracy, you said something that sparked me to mention that. Um, and then as far as Councillor Haneke, she's not a part of the Districting Advisory Board. So um, I really don't know what her extension of authority is over this group. I really, I don't think she has any. Um, I suppose that's something we could ask of, you know, Irene, maybe you wanna email Councilor uh, uh, President, uh, if you really want to. I was very surprised to receive the email mm -hmm. because my understanding is that we should be an independent mm -hmm. board and we should not get any directive from the council. I think. Yeah, it was a uh, comment. I, I was, like I was, public... I, I was, I think one thing is to receive, I was, I think the same question as Tracy is one thing is to receive something from the state. The first thing is why the 15? I thought that's something that should have come from us and not from the town manager or from the council. It should have come. We are, this committee is the one in charge of doing the redistricting. So I was very surprised that decisions were made for us before we met. But again, it wasn't a decision. It was a, let's explore this scenario so that we have some maps that we can start with. Um, it wasn't a decision. It was a. The, it read pretty much. This have fifteen and look at these things. Oh, her email. Yeah, yeah. I'm just talking uh, and about. And also, also the fifteen. I think, um, based on regulations, so they the only only way would be to have a precinct spread in two districts. That that's something that we need to discuss whether it's feasible or not. I think that's my take. Mm -hmm. uh, because my question is as follows: What takes precedent? on districting, which was the 5% difference between precincts or, um, so do we need to make a rank thing to what is gonna have precedent when setting up the, the, the precincts? Because I think the 5% difference between precincts is gonna be very hard when you have 15 precincts and you have very small numbers, it's gonna be very hard due to the type of population that we have in Amherst that you have some buildings are very concentrated uh, and then very sparse population. Having this 5% is gonna be very hard to set up. So um, I think as a committee, we're gonna to have to see, figure out how to what we give more priority or do, do we have to have something to give priority of the 5% takes precedence over 
going through main roads or uh, same type of uh, same type of uh, culture within the, the, the precincts. That's something I think we should be discussing um, for the meetings. How are we, what is gonna be taking precedence because if we can, I think it's otherwise to set up some rules before we start playing with the maps. Right. Yeah. I can ask the council, but I, I don't, I think we should start with a clean slate and we should start from this map and with the facts. What are the facts that we have, right? So from the state law, what is the state law telling us? Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody agrees or if anybody has any other comment. I, I don't disagree. I have to say I didn't read Mandy's email the way you did. I read okay. it as, I, for me, what I heard was the state had put, the, put out this you know, example of a map and she wanted to say, this is an example and we, we don't need to pay any attention to this. So th but, that, that, that was the tone that I got. So I'm just- Yeah, but that they already had the decision for going to 15 in there. The, yes, I mean, if the state is saying that we need to have 12, then, then I guess the question is 12 or 15, but if we feel that straddling a district is not feasible, then it's gotta be 15. So I, I, yes, I think you're right. We look at the question, we have to look deeply at the question of 12 versus 15, but we may not have a choice in the end, um, just because of both how the districts are done and the state indicating 12. But yeah, okay. I, absolutely. We, we start with what the state has said and we go from there. Also, all districts are representative of precincts. Precincts don't straddle districts. Again, it would be a nightmare on a ballot. So as it's currently, I'm looking at the charter, you know, you've got district one, our precincts blank and blank, district two blank. So if we, if you did decide to add just the two precincts, you'd have to figure out which district are each one of those two gonna go in and then the numbers have to work. Whereas if it was 15 precincts, you can just add one extra precinct into each one of the districts and then you have an even breakdown. Um, so yeah, you gotta work with the charter and you've gotta work with Mass General on it all has to, work together. Mm -hmm. Anybody else has a... Yeah, oh, uh, just, just real quick. Yeah, just about um, Haneke, you know, and I appreciate what you're offering there, Sue, but um, I think if there's a committee that's appointed, that there should be faith in the, you know, the intelligence and the ability of that committee and that they should have decided. They might have come to the same conclusion, but if, what's the worth of having a committee? Uh, so it's kind of like jumping the gun and shaping the narrative prior to even meeting. So I just thought it was really out of line and inappropriate. Oh, I wasn't supporting, I was passing it along. I was asked to pass it along, so I passed it along. And I would look at it as a public comment myself. Okay. So, I, yes, Mike. Um, so I, I just want to be clear, the, based on the population estimates that we have received from the state, we will at least have to do 12 precincts. There's, we can't go to 11, we can't stay with 10, we have to at least go with 12 based on the estimates. If the estimates are really bad, one way or the other, it's going to completely change that completely change everything. So, um, which we won't know until the end of September. Um, but there, the state did tell us that there is no minimum of, to the number of precincts that we could go to 30 if we wanted to, but obviously we're, we don't probably not going to consider that, but we at least have to go to 12. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone understood that. Tracy. Um, so I have a, just like a logistical question for Mike, and it seems to me as like, as I look at our, you know, the process that we're going to be going through in the next few months, and we are waiting for the official estimates until September. I was curious about if there is any population information on a geographic level that's already available in terms of the updates, or if the town just has numbers. That's part one of my question, but Mike, if you wanna 
Yeah, no, I can tackle that. So I have the estimate data. Um, I had to sign some sort of non, it's not really a non-disclosure agreement, but I, it's the data comes from the Donahue Institute. And I had to sign some sort of waiver saying, don't share this data, <laughs> um, except with our working group here. And it's oh, to okay. share the results with you. Um, I can look into that a little bit more and see if because what I'm thinking is I would love to take this population data and publish it to an online interactive web map. Right. And then you guys can all kind of play with stuff. Yeah. Know, play with. That I mean, would that, be ideal. Yeah. I mean, it seems like if we, if you have, I mean, this is the best we have right now. And if there's a certain degree of confidence in what we have, like, it seems like we should be in the next few months until we have the data the final data, we should be like working on clustering, creating these clusters. I mean, my approach would probably be to start at the precinct level and then like work to the districts, you know, in terms of what would make sense, but just to think about, you know, North Amherst, Central Amherst, South Amherst, and like the different clusters, UMass and so on. Right. Um, and if, so if we have a certain degree of confidence in what those populate, if what like kind of where the population centers are in Amherst as we try to split them up. And I mean, I agree with every day that it would be really hard to get, you know, to the 5%. And of course we couldn't do that piece until later in the process when we have the final numbers, but, but that would be a great resource to have. I, yeah, I, I, was, gonna, I was gonna suggest that we, we try to come up with a, with a list of data that we think that we need at this point because Mike is going to have to generate. Um, so for us to make informed decisions, if, if, if the data cannot be publicly published, what information do we need, right? Like right. you already mentioned uh, the growth, the potential buildings that are coming, but I yes. would, we would need to have the current population of the district, I would guess, uh, precincts, and what has been the changes mm -hmm. in each area, right? At least to have a bare, bare side view of what's happening in town so that we can start forming before moving lines. Well, and and I guess, sorry, a related question is just at what um, geographic level, like is the data, is the population data available? It's down to the census block. So do people under, I don't know if people, how experienced people are with, um, you might want census to have a little tutorial on that, but so. yeah, I mean, how large are census blocks typically? Um, it depends <laughs> is the answer. Census boundaries, and I'm sure is as part of this big PDF here, if you go into the weeds there, um, you know, it, it says, it tells us that we cannot arbitrarily draw precinct boundaries. They have to follow, um, road road line middles of roads or streams in cases um uh, power line cuts in a drastic situation which believe it or not we actually have a a power line cut that was a, a big census block driver um so census blocks can be very small like i think on the umass campus there are census blocks that like maybe just focus on the southwest dormitory and that's it versus some of the apartment complexes that are down here off of East Hadley Road, like this is all one census block. And so there's like a thousand people in that census block. Meanwhile, right across the street, there's a hundred people in the census block. So it can, it can, the size of them can vary. And that's something that I can show you guys when, when we really want to get into yeah. weeds um, so and I look mean, at the data. Maybe that could be something for our next week. So how many census blocks are there in Amherst, roughly? I don't know off the top of my head. Well, I mean, like, is it like dozens or uh, hundreds? Oh, there are hundreds of census blocks. Oh, good. Yeah, so I, we, I, I mean, guess. we do have like a pretty fine level of detail. That's great. Okay. So, I mean, sort of as a first mm -hmm. exercise, I wonder if it would be helpful for us to know um, where the, like, where the, preliminary data is showing the changes. So would the census block boundaries be the same as last census? I believe the they are. I believe, I believe with what the Donahue Institute provided, I believe that they are, yes. So then we could do like a, 
you know, comparison about where there were increases and where there were decreases. Mm -hmm. And just as a start to try to change things, I guess. So, I mean, I would love it if data is available, if we could start to maybe get into the weeds mm -hmm. and maybe, um, I was part of, I was on a committee recently where we were revising a map um, through our Zoom meetings. Um, and we were, we basically went, I think it took like three meetings and we went um, through different parts of Amherst at each meeting. And we talked about like where we wanted to change things and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. So if, if that's something that people would be interested <clears throat> in, I think that would be powerful. And I, and I do think that Manny Joe brought up some good points about not necessarily staying with the same district boundaries and the same precincts that we have right now. Um, just kind of also thinking about what other clusters make sense. I think, Tracy, to follow up on that, I think um, we should all come up, I don't know how we're gonna do it this collectively to pinpoint or everybody knows their own districts and other districts, what are the, the idea of the redistricting should be around common points of interest. I think that's part of the charter. Uh, so we should have identify what are uh, focal points throughout Amherst that can be anchor points for the 15 districts, precincts. I don't know if that's a way to start. Um, identify a, throughout Amherst different points that are kind of um, anchor points in the community in that area from the center villages to those are the bigger and more known to more smaller ones, because if we have 15, that's a lot. Uh, schools, I don't know if the schools would act as a, uh, as a meeting point or a center point and, and so on. I don't know if everybody agrees. Tracy? Uh, so one suggestion I have for that is just because you know there have been districting committees in the past like to look at what they identified as the clusters and i also know that the people on the charter commission including mandy johanneke which i think is why she weighed in that they had also spent time you know thinking about what are the clusters and so i'm um, there may be new clusters now as we talked about if there's new housing developments but we could even but even just starting with those older lists and saying yes, like these are still clusters, no populations changed. And these are also new clusters that have been identified that weren't there say 10 years ago or something as some of the new developments come in. Like for example, like um, Butternut, like Butternut was not online 10 years ago when the last census was done, which is the affordable housing project in South Amherst off of Route 116. So we would wanna identify where those new clusters are, so. That's, that's just my suggestion. Um, that can be, so I'm looking for action items before next meeting so that I will need to find that on that cluster and send it out so that everybody can take a look and we can discuss in the next meeting to see which ones are missing. So Mike, I have a question about the Donahue Institute because yeah. they have certain summaries that are on their website and through their newsletter. So these are like their latest statistics. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're asking? I, I'm just interested in what, yeah, what extra information, because they have quite a bit um, on their website and in their newsletter. Uh, what, what do you mean by what extra? So what you said that the Donahue Institute has information that um you have been sworn to secrecy no to, it's, to it's share. not sworn to secrecy <laughs> no it's, i know i'm just being facetious yeah. <laughs> okay so um maybe also it would be helpful um Irene, to look at the donahue institute what they already have on their website uh as some helpful predictors to to guide yeah, so the, the Donahue, I have not looked at the Donahue's website. I can take a look at that, but I can tell you that the, the data that they provided to me is an estimate of, for example, how many people are going to live in this apartment complex off of East Hadley Road. You know, oh, okay. It, like down to that level of specificity, you know. Um, right. The butternut development, um, it's going to show 
how many people are estimated to be there in in that development in this 2020 census it, but it's an estimate um i've i've heard from other cities and towns that they do not like the quality of the data but that doesn't mean that our town's data is not good okay so i have a question regarding the quality of the data mm -hmm. the fact that the census was doing, done during the pandemic and the university was closed and many mm -hmm. students were not in the dorms do we have an estimate of what was the impact of this i don't know officially but my understanding is that the umass population numbers were it were the main driver in the increase in population from 2010 to now. So I, I, I can't speak for that. I don't know if you have any details, Sue, if you, if you remember. I, I, no, I think I remember hearing something about um, as I had a note on that, I just read about it a little while ago and it was that they weren't really sure on that number. Yeah. They weren't uh, yeah. confident. Yeah. So, no, I just remember reading that they weren't confident with the numbers because of okay. the COVID. Yeah. Okay. So, so I want, um, I'm concerned that most of the conversation that we're having about um, population is geographically based, you know, where if somebody's in a, a housing development or a dorm or whatever. And I really want us to be aware also that there are um, communities of interest that may not be represented geographically. And I don't know how we're gonna get that information. Um, is that something that will come through? Is, is, is that available either from 2011? Is that available from the census data? Is that just available from the fact that we live in town? If that's the case, we're gonna, we're gonna need to reach out to the communities that are not represented on this board. So I, I'm not sure how to do that, but I really think it's important that we do. I'm gonna look through the 2011 binder and see if I can see anything on clusters and what they grouped as communities. I'm gonna check that out and see if I can find anything. Um, and but, yeah, so I mean, relatedly, so Mike, do you have, I mean, will the final, do the preliminary estimates or the final estimates, do they include additional types of census data, like including like um, like socioeconomic data, no. racial data, any of that data? No, no, it's purely, it's per purely housing, I think it's housing units, it's population count and maybe group quarter count, but it's, there's no demographic information in those estimates at all from what I've seen. Now, when we've received the information in, September will that include the additional those additional details um, in your experience in my experience yes it can be there um, I've worked with census data a lot census data is a, a lot of tables of information mm -hmm. right it's just massive database worth of data so mm -hmm. the but it's all you can tie everything together you can say um, this socioeconomic information tie it to this geography you know um, so we can we'll be able to do that sort of analysis if we want to when it comes time but right now i have not seen any sort of socioeconomic data for so, the, the estimates so does the american community survey like the ones the the mm -hmm. census data that's produced in between the decennial census, mm -hmm. like it does have some of the socioeconomic estimates, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And are those, so, I mean, if you go on the, I've worked with census data quite a bit too, because I have a background in planning mm -hmm. um, and I've done some GIS work and so on. But if you go, you know, if I, as a member of the public, like go to the Census Bureau's website, the smallest geography you can typically get data for is like at the census block group level, not the block level. Mm -hmm. And so do you have access to data that's more than, I mean, some of the block groups in Amherst are pretty large. Right. And they don't always make a lot of sense geographically, like in terms of, like, I think there's one that crosses like 116 or something, you know, mm -hmm. anyway, but do you have access to like more fine data that also has those socioeconomic components? Not for the not not that I'm aware of for the American Community Survey data. No, no. Um, I can do some digging to see if I can find some. Just... 
I mean, I think that the planning department, I had asked the planning department this for this other committee I serve on, um, you know, in terms of estimating the impacts, you know, of a certain project on a community mm -hmm. or something, like mm -hmm. who, how many people are impacted or things. And I think they just, they try to do the best they can in terms of surveys and stuff. Mm -hmm. They actually will go out and conduct their own sort of surveys, which is maybe on our scope, but right. I don't think they found it in data that was already available. Yeah. One thing, so one thing, and I'm sorry, um, there's a couple other hands up, um, but one thing that I've heard from other municipalities who are doing this work is that they've been frustrated by the projections of the uh, Donahue Institute, and instead they've been relying on their own town census, their own city or town mm. census that was done, which I don't know anything about, Sue. I don't, do we do a town census? Yes, we uh -huh. do. Do we? When's the <laughs> yes. last time we did one? Every single year. Every single year. year. And mm -hmm. what level of geography does that go down to? Like, see, I don't know how they would be. We, we send census forms out per household. Mm -hmm. so and it has, address. and what are the results? I've never data. seen the results. It I've has never age. Seen. Okay. So only if people answer it. No, it's not complete by any means. Oh, no, yeah. no, it, those are optional. Yeah. It's a lot of optional information on okay. there. That people don't choose to answer. It does have age. Yeah. Date of birth is on there. If they're, um, mm -hmm. That's definitely on all of them. Um, name, address, date of birth, if they're a registered voter, what their party is. And if they choose to fill in occupation or if they're a veteran, um, what else is on there? Not a whole lot. And not everybody answers. Um, and I just wanted to mention one other thing that's been brought up once or twice. Um, I've talked to other cities and towns who, this is Amherst's first time having to draw precincts and boundaries. In the past, historically, Amherst has only had to draw precincts. Um, so this is our first time having to edit both geographies. Um, and I've talked to other cities and towns, how do you do this? Um, and every town that I've talked to has said that they draw the precincts first because that's where you have the limitations of number of people and um, the variance between those, they're called polygons. Um, and then afterwards, after that is settled upon, you draw your, your districts around those. I'm not saying that that's what we have to do, but I just wanted to mention that that's what other communities have told me, so. I, I I have a question about the starting point because at some point I'm going to have to start to have a, a starting point and I'm going to have to start drawing maps and so on. Um, since we have, we might have to redraw districts. I think the first exercise would be because we got this 15 map, 15 uh, precincts just for math issues. Is there a way to keep the districts? So I have a question for you. If the districts as they are, if we divided the precincts that we have, so each two precincts that we have now, we divided them into three. Is there a way? Um, I, that's a, I, to have another starting point for this whole conversation is, uh, is there a way of dividing each of our districts into three? without having to change the district uh, boundaries? I, I don't know. Um, I did run, I, I, out of my own curiosity, I, I took the estimate data and I ran um, a calculated statistics to show how many estimated people were in each district. And I left those number on my work desk. So, <laughs> um, I, but, that would have been a, that would have given us a good idea of like how evenly would we be able to divide the districts into three without changing the boundaries. Um, I know that this might not be something that we want to do. This is something that we have to discuss. But I mm -hmm. thought at some point we're going to have to have different starting points on how to change things, mm -hmm. and there are different ways of approaching. Uh, that's my one is we can say we have a blank slate. This is our opportunity to look at the centers and um, start from there. Um, so I think that's one way we can tackle. I think this is a conversation that we all have to have that how do we start? We mm -hmm. can have 
we have a blank slate, we erase all boundaries as they are now. Um, we look at the cluster centers and we start building from there. That's one, one extreme. And I think the other extreme might be, we have these districts, people are attached to the districts, maybe. We have already representatives based on these districts. Can we keep the districts and divide them into three? So I think those are the two extremes as I see them, but everybody can have different ideas. And I think we should all come with that ideas how to tackle this problem. I think I went to two extremes, but there might be intermediate points. I, I'm, I'm starting to think, how are we going to tackle the information? There's uh, going to be a lot of information, and we're going to have to figure out a way to narrow down and proceed. Um, so, um, I kind of have a question that might yeah. relate to that. Um, I don't know. I'm sort of asking for information on this, but would uh, our redrawing of the precincts, would we also choose where the new polling places would be? Is that in our? No. Okay. No. Um, I just wanted to like see if that was something that would affect how we draw these precincts. If they would be either like, like I know four and five are both at the community center. I didn't know if like how we drew our the boundaries would affect. Um, Actually, yeah. Sorry to cut you off. Actually, that would be involved, but it's still up to the town council to vote where the precincts are. Um, I'm going to make a note to get clarification on that. Okay. Yeah. 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 In other words, do we recommend where the precinct, where the voting, we have our current established ones, but we'd have to, depending on, yeah, I think the idea might be to double up where they currently exist, but yeah, I'll check on that. So I want to be conscious of the time and I think, um, we, I think, I don't know if we are making progress, but I think it's at least on our ideas and there are some to do list, I think, at least for me. Um, so, yeah, so Irene, I think, yeah. um, you know, definitely uh, paying attention to time, but uh, you brought up how to begin to proceed. I think that's an yeah. important question because if it's about the the precincts then to me that's the logical place to try to figure out where the precincts should be and then the districts because the districts will follow how you create uh the the precincts and it's an opportunity as you say not necessarily for a total clean slate we can't you know uh disregard history but it would be an opportunity to to redraw based on uh, uh population and based on projected uh population growth um so in terms of what we're going to do for next week um we need to set a meeting time and then we a uh, to-do list. I actually, I agree with everybody saying that we start at the precinct level, but I also would very much like to see Mike's numbers. Um, if we, just knowing whether or not it's possible to keep the districts the same will be important for how we think about this and also how we present our results to the public. Um, if for example, we know we can't keep the districts the same, because of the population numbers, that's that's something that we just have to put out right from the beginning. So I um, I think that yeah. both of Irene's um, extremes are worth looking at. Okay. So um, yes, Mike. So I have a I have a list of things to to do. Um, so I'm I'm hearing we want to see kind of a population difference at the census block level from 2010 to 2020. I believe Tracy's the one who said that. Um, yeah, I mean, I did ask for that. If there are the, th I don't think that's the most important thing right, right now. Like as we're talking about clusters and like some bigger picture, it was just more if that information is available and people trust I, it. Yeah. I think it would be just good to see where the differences are in terms yeah. of as we're shifting the map. But it's it's totally doable. It would take time to produce um, its its analysis, but it could be done. Um, I mean, and I don't think it's like the top priority sure. or anything. Um, I'm going to get the list of growth from the the growth potential growth locations, the major developments um, from planning, 
um, basically running running statistics on the estimate population and comparing that to the kind of what's the population of each district based on the estimate data to see if we can break them up into three. And I'll do that for the current precincts as well. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything. No, I, I, th any, I think those are the main, the most important, the most important information that we need to st start having the discussion. And the other point of information that we need is um, the cluster list that was using for the charter when they were discussing the charter. And if Susan, you have access to the 2011, I think those would be good to distribute before the meeting so that uh, every all of us can take a look at it and see what's new, what's missing. Um, we cannot exchange emails because of uh, open meeting law, so we should discuss it here. But I think everybody should look at the list and say, okay, in this precinct, I think these are the things that are missing. So yes, I, I'd be happy to research that on the charter level because okay. it sounds like, um, I mean, if Sue is going to look at what the last districting board did, I can look at what the charter had identified. So okay, great. Can we, if uh, Tracy, you have it before the meeting, can we try to post it um, so that we have access to the documents before the meeting? You can send it to me. Certainly. Send, send okay. anything, yeah. meeting posting to me and I will put it into right. the uh, packet. And then Mike too, I think, right, he was gonna check about if we can have some kind of email address or something. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Or and maybe what, other, com what are other committees doing? <laughs> so. That's correct. So. Yeah, by the Thank way, you. if we if we do get permission to have an address email address, what's it going to be? What do we want it to be? Dab at amherstma.gov. Yeah. And a dab is yeah. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I'll put the, put I would say, I would say like re, you know districting yeah. and, and the year <laughs> and the year and the year too. Oh yeah, it's dab twenty twenty one. Yeah. Mm, yeah. How about districting twenty twenty one? I guess. Yeah. One other question I just had is about, um, you know, Mike, you were mentioning what other municipalities who are starting to work on this process are doing. And I was wondering if the state does offer like any kind of training to municipalities that are taking this on themselves. So I mean, that would be helpful for us as members of this board, not, not super technical GIS, but even just like in terms of how to think about it beyond the basic PowerPoint. They they are of the they are of the mentality that either you're doing this or we're doing it for you and there's kind of no <laughs> there isn't a lot of middle ground right, okay um so no yeah okay i have a question regarding that why was it decided so you said that most towns actually the state does it for them that's correct. why amherst does it themselves it's in the charter Okay. There shall be a districting advisory board every 10 years. Yeah, it's telling us this is what you have to do. So, okay. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, wondering what's yeah. the story behind it. And, and so we don't need to worry about how, what, how the charter is going to need to change, right, to reflect. The charter we can't doesn't... change the charter. That takes a, a act of legislation. We have to abide by what the charter says and go from there. The charter no, but doesn't it... mention piercings. The charter doesn't mention the precincts? No. Only for the district. first election. Oh, got it. OK. Yeah. I checked that. <laughs> okay. Right. The five districts only. Yeah. Only I mean, for... it, and it does say district one shall be precincts one and three, and district two shall be blah, blah, blah. But that's for the first election, You know. I think. That, is in that actually section... in the charter language itself, Sue, or is that uh, just? It is. Section 10 point something. Yeah, let me see. Um, I had it open in section. Yeah, it was in the transition section. Let me see. Page 32. It. Right. There we go. So the town election described in 10.7D, hold on, that is the first election, um, shall be to elect 10 district councilors. Correct. So first election. Correct. Um, blah, blah, blah. First regular election under this charter for town council as provided in article seven, which is the election section, shall be in the year 2021. Two district councilors shall be elected from each of the five following districts. So it's it's talking about both elections, the first and then the regular one. 
but then we have a problem because right because it's if we're going to have extra precincts this is only talking about the 10. this is what we have to determine <laughs> what to do so that that was a question that was i was trying to understand what was reading here whether it was only applying for the first election or the first election and this year's election or all elections because if we need to change the number of precincts then we need to have a charter so clarification on that item yep we have we need legal counsel to say tell us that mm -hmm. right that's what i'm saying right yeah yeah, yeah that was I, I i i'm i'm a physicist i'm not a lawyer so i was right. <laughs> trying to understand whether this applied to all elections or only these elections so that's something i can send to um town council and get a determination on section 10.7e and if that applies only to the first election or to all elections yeah okay i can do that okay any other Am I missing something for the agenda for today? Mm. I can also see if anybody has raised hands. So, uh, Tammy, yeah, muted. I just, I just want to um, make sure that we set up the meeting for next week. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm wondering if we, like, right now we we've been meeting for a little over two hours. Does this seem like a good block of time? And I'm, I guess I'm wondering if we can tentatively set the meeting for five to seven for next Wednesday to try to catch the other people who did not make it. Is that uh, reasonable or not reasonable? I wanted to, yes, I wanted to set up the meeting for next week. And I think Susan has identified, might have more information about what the times are better for the other people. Okay. All right, I'm gonna email them and find out. Does five to seven next Wednesday work for all of us here right now? Uh, tentatively, it works for me. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. It's okay. better than meeting during the workday, actually, for me. But it's uh, sorry. Is oh, it... I just said it's better than meeting earlier, right? Because it's you know if yeah. it's five to seven or something. But yeah, I have yeah. to agree. And and while I've been here, I keep having um, my supervisors come in and wanting to talk to me. So <laughs> being at yes. work also is not a great thing. <laughs> no. Okay. So. It's all right. Somebody set the alarm on me earlier. That's why I had a bolt. <laughs> all right. So I will call. I'll find out if the other three members can meet next Wednesday, 8, 11 from 5 to 7 p.m. And if so, I'll go ahead and set up the next meeting. But we, I need to have a, um, an agenda. So. Um, OK, so I think that I can send you the agenda. And I think everybody, if anybody has items, I think one of them is the standing item about the rules that we're going to have. Uh, revising material. Uh, I have to, I need wording. Um, what we have about the information that we have and anybody who wants to put something in the agenda, they should let me know to discuss. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like the main update would just be updates on what we talked about, you know, the extent to which Mike finds information or Sue finds information what information yeah. or what maps can be available to us and any details we can find about like the clustering that was used previously and how we may want to adapt yeah. it and just so i think that we could be updates on information requested um right that comprises is broad enough that comprises um all the topics that we discussed today you want to be specific though i've known groups get into trouble when they go too broad you want to be very specific about what you're talking about okay uh, but uh, you don't have to do it right then right now okay um, you can spell that out when you give it to me if there's anything else that comes through before i post this so next wednesday on the 8 11 at night i won't need to post that until monday morning on the 9th okay. so we have some time okay yeah i might have to go back and forth because i never wrote an agenda so um, um that's okay <laughs> I'll help you. Can I send the minutes to you when they're all typed up? Yeah, so that's part have to be on the agenda, discuss the minutes. So we should have them. Um, 
distribute it as soon as possible so that we can vote on the minutes before they're posted? Should I send them to everyone or should I just send them to Susan and they get uploaded to the website? What should be the procedure for that? No, um, well, I have to send you what the part that I have. So yeah, I suppose you can send to me and I can add the part from the beginning of the meeting before you were um, put in place. And then what I can do is send it to the chair. And okay. if that's okay with you, Irene. Yeah, I can. So the, um, I can, I don't know if I have everybody's email to send to everybody on the package. How the heck does it usually work? You send things, so I send whatever information before the meeting, I should send it. You should send it now that you're chair. So I'll give yeah. you, yeah. Well, or Sue, right before you just sent us the, um, you sent us the panelist links because we each need panelist links. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then if you continue to post them online, right? You sent us an email and said all the materials are posted online for the meeting. Yeah, so, that would be great. I mean, if we could just have that as like the, yeah. The procedure. There shouldn't be too much that Irene has to send out, I don't think. No, I, that would be great. So then we make sure that everything is posted and publicly so that everybody has access to the documents. And the minute okay. should just say draft, right? And draft, vote on exactly. Them. So that's, yeah, yeah. that's what I'll do. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah, Joseph, send to me. Thanks. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, so I'm going to request that if anybody has something to add to the agenda item, if they can send it by Friday so that I can send it by Friday. I would like to send it to you, Susan, by Friday. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, so I'm can... not here Friday, so don't rush. I'll be. I'll look at it Monday morning. Okay. I'm, off, I'm off this Friday. <laughs> okay. So don't rush. All right. Okay. So. Um, I think we need to make a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. A second. Okay. Um, do we vote? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tammy Parks? Aye. Peggy Shannon? Aye. Tracy Safian? Aye. Jeff S. Gordon? Aye. And Irene Hovne? Aye. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Bye bye. 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 Yeah. Uh...